So another thing, if we can correct, because this is something I want to know for myself, is in those days, the, how men and women coexisted, the role of the man and the woman, the family structure, what does that look like? What did that look like? Okay, now, so let me, let me go back to this original story because it serves as a prototype. So the story of Asar, Aset, and Heru mm -hmm. uh, is a story that lays out uh, the roles of the man, okay. the roles of the woman, and the responsibility of the man and the woman to bring children into the world and to prepare them for life. So the story of Asar is the story of a man. The story is part history and part mythology, right? So it's the story of a man who comes and, and um, unites his people. He invents writing, a means of recording your history. Mm -hmm. He introduces agriculture, science, and government, mm -hmm. a means by which a people can sustain themselves. He marries a woman, a set, who is his equal. So this mm -hmm. idea of uh, the woman being a helpmate to man, no, the woman is equal to the man because everything exists within a masculine and a feminine form. And it's through the mutual balance or harmonization of these two forms that life comes into existence. It's, mm -hmm. it's simple. One plus one equals Two, yeah, course, but you see they throw rocks equal. at us when we say we want our equal. Now we too, like we getting ahead of ourselves or... See, but look, but look, look let's, let's, uh, again, context is everything. Okay. When we say now we want to be equal to men, the men we want to be equal to are distorted perceptions of European manhood. Mm -hmm. It's not an African man that we're talking about we want to be equal to. And so the women, the black women who want to be equal to the black man who wants to be a white man, is a black woman who wants to model uh, European womanhood. Who wants to be equal to that? Who wants to be equal to the oppressor? So it's about going back to the original prototype, the original mm -hmm. model and manifesting that within your consciousness. That is what had to be erased. So um, it's, it's, it's an understanding that life cannot exist mm -hmm. without a mutually harmonious relationship between the masculine forces of energy and the feminine forces of energy. Mm -hmm. Both are required. So that in, yes, in, both are in the ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic concept, you have the creator, and then you have aspects of the creator that were known as Neturu. And every aspect of the creator was created with a masculine and feminine counterpart. Right. So it's reinforcing this idea of the importance of balance of the masculine and feminine forces of energy. Right. So when Asar died, his wife assumed responsibility for controlling their nation, which means that this woman had to be equal to her husband, not subservient to, to him. Do so. mm -hmm. and, and so in order for this legacy to continue, the spirit of Asar impregnated his virgin wife. And she gave birth to her son, Heru, on a date that is familiar to most of us, December the 25th. Wow. 